Hello, I hope you all well and safe in light of what's going on. What I'd like to talk about in this lecture is what is Q and how do we calculate Q in transverse shear stress? I know there was a question and I had some difficulty with it figuring Q out. Before we get into Q, let's review what we talked about in class in the topic uh, shear stress in beam. So if you have a beam which is uh, subjected to pure bending, in addition to that, say if you have a uh, transverse uh, loading on it, and if we cut that and it's deflected, if you cut that beam, look at the cross section of it, we can see the uh, internal forces. One of the internal forces is a bending moment which cause normal bending stress, uh, sigma is equal mc over i. And but what we like to focus on is the shear force. The shear force, uh, which causes a transverse shear stress uh, distribution throughout the beam's cross section. And due to the uh, uh, complementary of the shear uh, uh, force, uh, the shear stress uh, also can cause a longitudinal shear stress along the length of the beam. So that's why when you look at the uh, like a bridge deck, and you have a concrete deck or, or, a, or a building slab over a beam and they can slide over each other so that's why we put a shear connector there to prevent them from sliding and if we have uh, uh, for example we got a beam multiple beam like this with here the surface between them are smooth and if this is subjected to a load and if it's bent and these move over each other and so there's a shear stress going on in a uh, horizontal direction. So when we look at the shear stress distribution, we see the, uh, the shear stress on top and bottom are zero, but in the middle is uh, when neutral axis is, is the maximum. So what is Q? The Q is the first moment of the area between the location where we want to calculate that shear, where we're looking for that shear, and where the shear is zero, either below it or above it. We're going to have, we have an example here to uh, explain in more detail what Q is. So if you look at this example right here, we have this I-beam, have a top flange and bottom flange, and the uh, bottom flange is a 300 uh, millimeter, same as the top, and the web is a uh, 200 millimeter by uh, 15 millimeter thickness, and the thickness of bottom and top flange are 20 uh, millimeter. Um, so uh, naturally, because it's symmetric on the bottom and top, the neutral axis falls in right down in the middle. And the equation we're looking for here is, uh, we talked about is uh, shear is equal VQ divided by IT, and uh, Q was Y prime time A prime. And what we're looking for, we want to find out uh, the shear given to us is 880 kilonewton. And we're looking for a shear stress, a transverse shear stress at the neutral axis and a point B and B prime. Point B is inside of the uh, web just before the flange. And point B prime is just about here on the other side of it. It's inside of the flange. Uh, B prime is inside the flange and B is inside of the web but they're right on top of each other. So we want to find out the uh, Q. What we, to, in order for us to find the shear, we're going to define V, Q, I, T. Let's first calculate I, and then we go ahead and uh, talk about Q in a minute. Get I out of the way. And we know I was uh, 112 B H Q plus A D squared. And uh, pretty self-explanatory except for the D part. D is the uh, distance uh, between the uh, center of the shape. You take in the moment inertia and uh, uh, neutral axis. So in this case, let's say is equal 112 for this whole shape. Let's start out with the bottom because the flange, bottom flange and top flange are both basically the same. There's two of them. They're symmetric. We're going to say, uh, I put a two in here first. Uh, there's two of them, two times. 
112 and B is a 300. So I said, let's go make them to a meter, 0.3, and H is a 20 millimeter that become 0.02, uh, 0.02 cube plus the area, which is a 0.02 times 0.3, and D squared. And D squared is um, distance from this, this center right here to neutral axis. So we got to divide this by 2 become 10, 10 plus 100 become 110. So this become 0.110, that's uh, a square, then plus the, um, this is a two, and now plus the uh, web itself. The web itself is 112, and B was 0 0.02, no, 15 millimeter. It's a 0 0.015, 0 0.015 time 0.2, which is the height, and that's cube, and D is a zero because the center of that shape, it's the same as the center of the neutral axis, so that becomes zero. And that's equal. What do I have here is uh, 155.6 times 10 by uh, negative six meter by power four. Okay, now we're gonna calculate Q. And Q was uh, Y prime time A prime. And uh, how we calculate that is, uh, let's do a Q about point B and B prime. Now Q is the first moment area above the point we're looking for. So if I'm looking for, let's say QB here first, QB, and my B is right here. What is the area above here? It's this area right here, this green shaded area. That's my area. So the area above B is right that. Fine. And uh, that's, the area is uh, 0.3 time 0.02. What is the Y prime? Y prime, it's a distance from the center of the area I'm looking for to neutral axis. So this center of this area that I'm looking for between here is 110, so that's 0.11. And that comes out to uh, 6.5. Six point six, point six six, point six six times ten by negative uh, three meter cube. Do I have that right? Yep. All right. What is B? That was QB. What about B prime? B prime is a point just above this. Uh, just about a hair away. The distance between B and B prime is almost nothing. One is inside the flange, one is inside the web. So they're basically on top of each other. So what's the area above the B prime? It's the same as A, same area as before. And what's the distance from the center of that shape to the uh, neutral axis? It's the same thing. There's no difference between them. So we can say, okay, QB is equal QB prime. So what's the all fuss about? Huh? When I do calculation for QB, the thickness is 50 millimeter, but the calculation for B prime is 300 millimeter. The shear stress is a lot bigger in the in a web than it is in a flange. As we talked about, as the higher you go, it become less and it becomes zero on top here because of this equation, which we're going to get to in a minute. All right, let's calculate the shear stress for both of them. We're going to say uh, we need some room here. Shear stress for point B first. My V is given, it's a 80 kilonewton. So 80 times 10 by power three. And then I have my Q, which came out 0.66, times 10 by negative three cubic meter, and divide the whole thing by uh, I. I was 155.6 times 10 negative six, 
and time t. This is what makes a big difference. What is t for point B? It's 50 millimeters, so it's 0 0.015. And this answer kind of come out to um, 22.6 uh, megapascal. Okay, now let's do the same thing for TB prime, and B prime is inside of the flange. T, I mean, uh, shear for B prime, not T. Uh, shear, transverse shear. So I have same thing, same as above, is 80 times 10 by power 3 multiplied by 0 0.66 times then negative 3 divided by same i, 155.6, 10 by negative 6. And the thickness for that is 300 millimeters, so it's 0 0.3. And this answer came out to uh, 1.13. Big difference between these two. You can tell. All right. Now while we have it, let's find the maximum uh, share at the neutral axis. So, uh, let's see if I can make this different color. Share max at the neutral axis equal uh, VQ, V is 80. How about that? Um, 0.66 is a Q. No, we've got to calculate Q. Our Q is not going to be the same. So I need room to calculate Q. Hold on. I will erase this and I will calculate Q. Calculate the Q by the neutral axis. Okay. And that's equal. Now we want to do the Q for neutral axis. The Q, again, what is Q? What is our point of interest? Neutral axis. Okay. Either above this point or below this point, all the way to, to where shear stress is equal to zero, which is it either top or bottom. So the area, the first moment area we're looking above neutral axis, it's going to be from this point either all the way down, is from this point all the way up. It doesn't matter, this is symmetric. So we just go up all the way up here. So the point I'm looking for is right here and the area above it is this one and this one. So I've got to take a cube about this one and i got a cube about that one. So it will be summation of, it will be basically summation of uh, uh, what we had y prime time a prime which is equal, uh, which is equal, let's start off from the uh, web part, and the, what's the y prime? The y prime is this whole thing right here, this area, this color red with the pink. That didn't work. Uh, it's a good marker, it should work. So, uh, this is gonna be this whole area right here, um, and the halfway distance between here to the neutral axis is 50 millimeter. So my Y prime is 0 0.05, 0 0.05, that's a 50 millimeter, and the area is uh, 100, which is 0 0.1, and the width is 0 0.015, okay? That's a five. Now, uh, the uh, second shape is right here. So the second shape, it's going to be... Uh, the area it's going to be, we know, well, it's, the y prime is going to be from the center of this shape all the way to here, which is 110. So plus 0 0.110 time the area 0.3 time 0.02. And that came out to uh, 0.735 time uh, 10 by negative 3 meter cube. Now I can go ahead and calculate my shear max down here. So let's find the shear max back down here. I have it's a VQ over I, it's 80 time uh, uh, Q, and Q is 0 0.735 times 10 by negative 3. And now the, um, it's 155 point, uh, I erased it, 0 0.6 time 10 by negative 6. That's my moment inertia, and the thickness is uh, 0 0.015. Because the area, it's about here. The area, the uh, uh, the uh, 
thickness, y is 0.015, we take in the shear, uh, we want to shear at a neutral axis. So our Q is a neutral axis. The area above here, my, the, my point of interest is right here. So the thickness right here is 0.015. But the Q has to be for both shape. So that comes out to uh, 25.2 MPA. And we can say this is uh, the bigger than the other two. It's kind of 25 here, it goes over here, become 22, and uh, then it become 1.13 when it gets to the flange, and then when it gets here, zero. One other thing we can calculate is the average share. Some codes allow you can calculate average share, which is equal to uh, V over A. And if this was the uh, rectangular shape, it would be 1.5 V over A. So that comes out to 80 times 10 by power 3. That's a kilometer. The area was uh, 0 0.015 times 0 0.02 for the web itself. And that will give us 26.7. Uh, Now, how, this is how we're going to calculate Q. And I noticed in class there was a couple of students who were asking me about, Professor, how come you don't put picture of food anymore on a PowerPoint? We miss it. Well, since I'm, we can't teach you in class for a while until the semester is over, here it is. I want you to take a look at this nice picture. And let me tell you, see the garlic bread? You got to cook it in a special way so it tastes really awesome. What you got to do is, you take a big clove of garlic and chop them up to small pieces, or you can put them in a grinder, a food processor, and then you bring a cup or two cups of olive oil and let them sit over at night time. Then when you lay out your garlic bread, you just pour them generously on top of your garlic bread and you put them in the oven. Make sure you don't burn them. And it is delicious, just like this problem is. Take care, be well and safe. We'll see you in another lecture soon coming up.